Dear Father in Heaven, as I share about your leading in the past, give me grace for the present. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, friends, I've seen God do many things. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing when you really look closely to see God's hand working in your life and the life of those around you. One of the most amazing experiences I've ever had is when Darlene and I got a call to go to Iron City, Tennessee, start a health ministry. So we went out there, it's a big farmhouse, it was empty, there was nothing inside, no furniture, we had no money, had a white car, <laughs> and I had a lot of uh, expectation, and maybe some fear and trembling, but when we got there, there was an old barn falling down, I took the boards off the barn, made a little table, went to Dollar General store, bought two green plastic chairs, sat down to have lunch, and said, Lord, if you don't do a miracle, we're done for. And uh, it's, it's too long a story to share, but the Lord sent us our first patient and then a second patient. We were doing lifestyle medicine. And lifestyle medicine, of course, is addressing these lifestyle diseases, chronic diseases, uh, osteoporosis and obesity and cancer and heart disease and all of these arthritis with lifestyle change. It's not how things turned out, though. We ended up working with people that had mental health issues, that had uh, challenges with drugs and alcohol, just all sorts of people that had unusual uh, challenges in their life. And as I look back, I can see what the Lord did. He pulled me out of a pit I was in, and then He gave me an opportunity to help people that had been in the same dire circumstances that I had been in. And it was a great blessing. It was hard at times, but it was a great blessing. But we got moved into the, uh, we, we ended up, we named it Sunshine. And we moved into Sunshine, big old house on the hill. And we started taking guests. And we had two rooms in the bottom of the farmhouse. Uh, by the way, we got some furniture. God sent a woman over there, saw our circumstances and wanted to help us. And she furnished the house. But we, we made the two bottom bedrooms into patient rooms. And then the staff lived on the second floor, and Darlene and I lived up in the attic. And in the summer, it was just hot as blazes up there. <laughs> but it's one of those good, memorable experiences. When you look back, you can laugh, but at the time, it was pretty. It was a cooker. And so we went along for two, three, four years like that. And the Lord would send us patients, and He would He would do things in their hearts because our program was very simple. You know, I remember our first patient. I took him down to the creek. We did a lot of swimming, did a lot of walking. Darlene made some good whole food, plant-based food. And he got a real experience. Went back home, got other people that came, and they got an experience too. And I see it was God in the book of nature, you know, God's creation, working on the hearts as we just shared the simple uh, parts of health of mind, body, and soul. And it was a good experience for me. I was learning, you know, I was... I was, not a, I was not a new Christian at this time, but I wasn't far from it. So I was learning how to work with people, how to, uh, how to practice the science of health. You know, I didn't, didn't really know. Uh, we'd been in the Philippines. I'd learned to give a Bible study, uh, you know, a halfway Bible study. I learned a little bit about this, that, and the other, but as far as really working with guests that had serious health issues, I was a novice. It, it was new. I was new on the job. But the best way to learn if you're new on the job is by experience, and God gave me a lot of that. So after we've been there a while, I uh, got a phone call one day. And the man said, uh, we'd like to come down. Some people up in uh, Bluffton, Indiana, we'd like to come down, build you a health center. We'll do it in three days. And about that time, I just hung the phone up. I thought it was a prank phone call. He called back. His name ended up being Ben, Ben Graber, a good friend today. He called me, he explained there were a group of Amish people up in Bluffton, Indiana. They would come down and build us a health center. And I told him we had no money, we had no staff, we had just very, very few people on the staff. Small program, and I just I didn't see how it was going to work. And he said, well, I think he said nine brothers. One owned a sawmill, one owned a window factory, one owned a door factory, something like that. All the brothers owned all the things we'd need. He said, we will bring it down and, and build it and send it down and give it to you at cost. I said, well, we don't have any money. <laughs> he said, don't worry about it. And I said, how are you going to get all that stuff down there from Indiana? It's a 10-hour drive. He said, well, well, we'll, we'll mail it down there. And 
I said, but we, I, I just didn't know what to say. But he said, first thing you got to have, you got to have a foundation. You need to get a you know, concrete foundation. We're going to build a building on top of that, the wall for the foundation. And I said, okay, hung up, found out it was really a, a real deal and called a lady in Florence, Alabama. Her name was Ruth, precious lady. I never really asked for money in my life, but I called her up and said, uh, Ruth, got an offer from Amish folks to come build our health center, that I got to build a foundation wall. She said, what's well, going to cost? I said, about 2500 for materials. She said, the check's in the mail. And I had an inkling at that point, God was in it. In Romans 8.31, if God's for us, come on, who can be against us? So uh, we got the... We had money for materials, but I didn't know how to lay block, didn't know anybody that could lay block, and I got a call from a couple and their son. They were working in the UP, Upper Peninsula in Michigan, and they said, we heard you needed somebody to lay block. I don't know where they heard that from, <laughs> but they didn't hear it from me. And they came down, they laid block for Walmart. They came down, and here they are laying the block. And when the foundation wall was finished, these precious people, when this foundation wall was finished, I called up Ben Graber and I said, we got the wall. He said, we'll be down a week from Tuesday. You got two vans coming down. You got some older folks. We got some younger folks. Uh, six o'clock in the morning, we'll be there. So a week from Tuesday, I went down there to the, where we're going to build a health center, which is a place that had been in the woods. I got the tractor out, bush hogged out all the, the, the underbrush. And this was the place we we're going to build the health center. I was waiting. And the sun's just starting to come up and this van rolls up. And as the doors open up, these, uh, these what I think they are children, these children get out. They look at me. I say, good morning. I'm looking for their parents. They walk right past me. They put their little tool belts on. They begin to build. And these children built our health center in two and a half days. And the second van rolled up and it was the older folks. I think the oldest of the old folks was about 30 years old. And they began to build. Now, they were all carpenters, experienced carpenters, but they didn't work together up there in Indiana, but they were all carpenters. And I think this is the way the building looked at the end of the first day. At night, they wanted to study the Bible. You know, we, I found out that Amish people are Christian. I knew nothing about Amish people. I had this idea they drove buggies. Uh, that's all I knew, but it ended, out, it ended up they were very, very precious, very interested people in the Bible. So at night, we studied the Bible. The daytime, we'd work together. And here's the next day, uh, putting up the walls and, you know, getting the roof ready to go on the porch and things are happening and I can't believe it. You know, I'm wondering how we're going to pay for it, but I, I can't believe it. And I got to be really close with several of them. You know, it's, it's strange how working together on a project inspired by God brings a closeness to hearts. And this is Lester Graber. He and I became very, very close friends. And uh, at the end of the second day, we studied the Bible that night, got up the next day, uh, put the finishing touches on the roof, put the doors and the windows in, and then they were off. That was it. And uh, so many good experiences. I'll just share one. I told Ben, who had put, kind of put the project together, Ben's the one that had all the brothers. I said, Ben, you know, uh, all we got is $500 in the bank. And I said, I at least can give you that. He said, don't worry about the money. We're going to send you a bill. I said, okay. But here's $500. And he told me, he said, look, you need it worse than we do. I said, well, you know, give it to a widow. Do something with it. Because we, we have to do something. We can't let you come all this way and not just express our thanks. We have to do something. And I really pushed him to take it. And finally... He just, he, he took the money. And as I handed it to him, I said, Ben, God can, can, can pay us back anytime. God can give it right back to us. As I put the check in his hand, another man walked up to me and they said, this is from one of, the, one of your friends there, these Amish men, and it was a check. And I looked at Ben and I said, guess how much it's for? He said, not for $500. And I showed him the check. It had taken God less than a second to give it right back to us. And that's the way I found that God is. No matter how much you give, He can always give it right back. And the Lord is not short on means. So they went back home. 
I got a bill in the mail. Now, that last day, we'd had some donations, 16000 And I was able to give him that for the materials. The bill for the materials was 35000 So we had less than half. When he got back to Indiana, they sent me an itemized bill of all the materials to uh, frame in, to dry in the health center. And on the bottom, where it said the balance due, under that it said, stamped in red, paid in full. My friends, the Amish, they built it and then they paid for it. That was the first miracle. Now, even though the outside was done, the inside wasn't. We had no walls, we had no floor, we had no counters, we had no bathtub, we had no wiring, we had no electricity, we had nothing. We had the outside, there was no siding on it, but we had it dried in, which means the rain won't fall and you got windows and doors on it. Then I got another phone call and another group of Amish people wanted to come back and they wanted to do the siding. And then another phone call, they would do the electrical work. And another call, they would do the plumbing. And another call, they would do the floors. And after several months, the building was finished as far as building it. It was not furnished, but the building was finished, but empty. And then I got a call, uh, it was in the evening, uh, requesting me to come down to what we we'd, later we'd call our health center. And I got down there, there was like a tractor trailer truck backed in and he was going to unload some things. And we talked and he, I said, well, what is it? Where is it from? He said, I can't tell you where it's from, but he opened the doors. It was a lot of furniture. So in one night, he unloaded all that furniture into our health center that included the washer, the dryers, the, uh, the refrigerators, we, we had everything. Sofas, rocking chairs, a lot of pictures of Amish people driving buggies. I knew where it came from and we were furnished. And the next day we opened for business. Now along the way, I'd had a question. Uh, there was a man who wanted to know if he would fund the last part of the expenses. At that time, I don't know, 15, 20, 25,000. If he would fund it, would we name the builder at building after him? <laughs> I said, no way. No way. Because no man gave us that building. That was from God. John 1, uh, James 1.17, every good gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. Every good and perfect gift. And I knew that building came from God. And we ended up naming it Miracle Manor. And I think it's evident why. And as we also were nearing completion, the plumbing, had a group of Amish people call me. They said, look, we got a master plumber coming down. This is on Thursday. We got a master plumber coming down, but we got to pay him for Monday. He's going to give us everything, all the things that we're going to install. It's going to be at cost, but it's still, you got 11 bathrooms and toilets and showers, all of these things. It's still going to be a lot of money. Uh, I said, well, how much? He said, $15,000. And I said, uh, and you got to have it by when? He said, if we don't come Monday, I don't know when we can come. He is available to come on Monday. He's willing to help us, not charge us anything. I said, bring him on. <laughs> come on down. <laughs> and then I hung up. I said, Lord, have mercy. We got three or four days, got no money in the bank. We need $15,000. The next morning, as I'm driving to Collinwood, I go by the post office to get her mail. I've got it in my lap. I'm driving to Waynesboro. I'm flipping through the mail. And there is a letter there from a name I do not recognize. I pull up the letter. I open it up. And my dear friends, there was $15,000 in that letter. Now, the name I did not recognize, but it was from Indiana. So I had a friend up in Indiana that was driving the Amish people up and down. And I said, who is this man? What, do you know this man? He said, yeah, yeah. That's how everything started. There were two young men sent down to our facility. They weren't Amish. God gave them new hearts. And when they went back to Indiana, many in the Amish community saw these two men and they asked what happened to them. Their life had changed direction. And they heard about the work God was doing down there at our health center. Well, in our farmhouse at that time. And they decided they wanted to come down and help us build the health center. Now, those two men, <clears throat> the grandfather of one of them, had sent the money. But that was a year and a half before. 
a year and a half after those two young men came to our program, the granddad wanted to say thank you. He sent us $15,000 and it arrived on Friday just ahead of the plumbers. And this is how God works. He doesn't come early. He doesn't come late. He's usually dead right on time. And often it's a trial for our patience to wait upon the Lord. Because they that wait upon the Lord, 40, 40, 31 of Isaiah, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And the Lord was teaching me to wait. So we got everything ready. I mean, the building was ready. We were ready to open, except we didn't have any water. And uh, so I called up a man. Somebody gave us $2,500 to dig a well because there's no city water out there in the country where we were. Gave us $2,500 to dig a well. I called a man. His name was Mr. Stooksbury. And I asked him, I said, you know, uh, we need a well. Can you come drill us a well? He was a well driller. He came out. We walked around. We talked a while. He uh, told me how much it would cost, $10 a foot. I said, how far do you think the water is? You know, how deep is it? He said, well, I don't know. Probably about 100 feet. I said, okay, $10 a foot, that's $1,000. And so uh, I said, when can you start? He said, well, a uh, couple of days. And I said, where are you going to drill? He said, I don't know, wherever you tell me. I said, I don't know where the water is. He said, neither do I. And so he brought his big well drilling rig out there. And he started drilling when I told him this is the place and he made it very clear to me, I wasn't paying him for water. I was paying him for the hole, $10 a feet, $10 a foot. So he began to drill and he got down to about 100 feet. I was expecting him to hit water, but he didn't. He got 110, 120, 130, 140, 50, 60, 70. He hit 200 feet. And at that point, I owed him $2,000. I only had 2,500. And he looked at me, he said, what you have here is a dry hole. Now, I didn't need a dictionary to figure out what that meant. <laughs> dry hole. I said, what do we do? He said, well, I suggest that you, uh, you, 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 we pull out, go over, and we drill somewhere else. I said, you're kidding me. Because I had uh, enough for 50 more feet. And I knew I wasn't going to hit water then, so I had a prayer meeting. Got down on the porch, those Amish folks had built. Got down on the porch, and I prayed my heart out. I said, Lord, what are we going to do? $2,000 gone, 500 left. I don't know what to do. And God spoke to my heart. I got up off my knees. I said, Mr. Stooksbury, drill 50 more feet. And then his well driller broke down and he took a week or two to get it fixed. He came back and would drill 50 more feet. Now I was working in a different part of the institution, but I got a call. I had my camera with me. We were working on a bakery and my camera with me. And the man that called me said, you got to come down here and see something. I came down there. I had my camera. This is the picture I took. Water was gushing out of that hole. Mr. Stooksbury was smiling. And I said, you hit water. He said, well, not exactly. He said, I said I'd give you 50 more feet. And I drilled 50 more feet, dry hole. And he said, before I extracted my drill from this hole, I decided I'd give you five more feet for free. And I hit water on the 255th foot. He said, this is a miracle. Now that man was a part-time well driller and full-time Methodist minister. He said, this thing is a miracle. And I thought God strikes again. God did it again. He did it for the plumbing. He did it for the health center. He did it for the water. And then uh, it just it didn't end there. Then we needed, the problem is, you know, we built the health center. It was all mud around it. We had no way to get cars in and out. They parked up on the road. So they decided, a group from uh, up in the north uh, Indiana up there, they would come down and build us a driveway. And so a young man named Jonas came down, brought some of his equipment with him, and laid out a, a driveway and then poured concrete. And I was there to help, to help a little bit, and I witnessed the whole thing. I couldn't believe it. Now the Lord has sent us a double-wide driveway. And this young man, he was uh, always on the cell phone talking, always busy. They told me he had five or six businesses up there. Very, very busy man. And he's too busy to talk. <laughs> but I told him the last day, I said, I got a business proposition. And that got his attention. We went in, we sat down. I said, Jonas... So here's my deal. 
if you build me a driveway, now he already built the driveway. You know, he, he, he'd already done his side. If you built me a driveway, I'll pray for you the rest of my life. He looked at me. He said, you got yourself a deal. And I've been praying for my Amish friends up until now. And so when they finally finished up, packed up, and they left, I knew God had done something. I'd seen miracle after miracle. Just very few have I recounted in this little short last 10-15 minutes. I've seen miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. It has kept us going and sustained us in our ministry. But the greatest miracle I've ever seen, by far the greatest, most miraculous work of the long arm of God is to change the hearts of men and women like you and me. Uh, the man that was blind, John 9, 25, this one thing I know, I once was blind, but now I see. He'd gotten his spiritual eyesight back. He recognized Christ as the Messiah. This is the Lord's work today. What he did back then, he's doing today, giving spiritual eyesight to recognize in Jesus our Savior and our Redeemer. So my dear friends, if you need a miracle, you've got to be in a place where you need one. You've got to be led there by God. But if God has led you to a place like Moses before the Red Sea, if He's led you to a place and you need a miracle, you need a deliverance, my dear friends, God's arm is not short that He cannot deliver. God bless you. You have a nice day.